Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Wednesday service for the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. My name is Mark Kroll, and I am so excited to be here tonight to serve pulpit for the lovely and the beautiful Liz Racy, who's going to be giving the talk tonight. So as you know, we always start our Wednesday service with meditation. For those in the sanctuary, please, if you have a cell phone or a device, please check now to make sure it's turned off or that it's in the do not disturb or the silent mode. And again, a special welcome to all of those of you that are uh, joining us on Zoom or on Facebook. We are just so excited that you are all here with us. As we shift into meditation, use whatever chant or whatever process that is comfortable to you. Focus on the breath, breathing in, breathing out, saying the chant, God is the love that I am, I am the love that God is, God is, I am, whatever works for you. And we will come back in 10 minutes.
As our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you that have joined us after our meditation. Uh, we're so glad to have you with us virtually or in person. And for those of you that may not be watching right now or with us right now, but are watching later tonight or in the days or weeks ahead, we're just so glad that you're a part of this community. So now we're going to let our musical ministry, Sam Krieger and Tina Meeks, um, lead us in this opening chant. Thank you so much. So let's join together in prayer. Go ahead and turn back within. Take a deep, loving, spirit-filled breath in. Just feeling the absolute beauty and the majesty of the one source, that one power, that one principle that I call God. We know that God is all there is. God is love and God is light. God is wholeness. God is abundance. God is prosperity. God is well-being. God is joy. God is beauty. God is peace. God is grace. This is the truth of the universe. This is the truth of who and what we are. I know that I am an individuated and particular embodiment and expression of God. And I know this holds true for everyone that is joining us together tonight during this most sacred service. I know that tonight is blessed and very blessed and that we come together as a community, as a fellowship, to just revel in the spirit and the love and the goodness that is God. We are made stronger. We are made smarter. We are made more loving. And it's not just us. We stand on the shoulders of Ernest Holmes and Emma Curtis Hopkins and Eric Butterworth and all of those teachers that have come before us, they are with us right here and right now in this sacred space, in this sacred time. And for this, I am so very grateful. I'm so thankful for our time together. I'm so thankful for Liz Racy. I'm so thankful for Tina and Sam or for everyone that has come together to celebrate together. And I'm so grateful for everyone here, for the consciousness that you bring because we are made stronger as a result of coming together. So with a heart full of joy and gratitude, I release my word into the law of mind, knowing it is so, knowing it is done. And so it is. Together we say, Amen. So please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Working on a better plan. I am putting my life in the master's hands. And with every step I am taking, I'm a miracle, miracle in the making. I am looking on a brighter day. And I'm living my life in a better way. And with every step, Meeks, thank you, Sam. Wow, I'm a miracle. Indeed, baby. I mean, today we're talking about the divine spark, and that's, that's what it is, the divine spark. I am a miracle, and we have to stand in our truth and claim that power. I'm so excited. Thank you. Love that woman. Okay, so I always like to start with the reading, and um, our practitioner, Christy Shelton, sent this out in one of our practitioner emails recently, and I haven't stopped reading it ever since. Every morning, I read it again, and I read it again. So thank you, Christy. This is uh, Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes, page 293. I know I am now at the threshold of all good wisdom and truth. All the good I can embody is now mine. I have only to open the portals of my soul and accept that which is ready to express through me. I expect fully, emphatically, the answer to my prayer to day. Right now, I do possess this thing I greatly desire. I remove my fear of lack and negation, for it is the only barrier which stands in the way of my experience of good. I alone can remove it, and I do remove it now. In this moment, my good comes to me enough and to spare, to give, and to share. I can never be exhausted. My good can never be deleted because that source from which my good comes is inexhaustible. Today, in this moment, 
the law responds to my thought. My word is one of affirmation rising from the knowledge that the good, the enduring, the true are eternalities in my experience. I cannot be apart from that which is my good. My good is assured me by God, the indwelling essence of my life. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that magnificent? My good is here, right here, right in this moment, right now. And um, some of you, uh, recently we took a, a class with um, uh, Dr. Mark Curtis, Emma Hopkins, and one thing in the work we are doing is what she says is, um, my good is God. We often say, my God is good, God is my good, God is my this, God is my, but she does it in the reverse situation. She says, my good is God, my health is God, my wealth is God, because what we're calling forth in everything that we do is we're calling forth God. So I love that switch up, my good is God, and it's happening all the time. See, right within each and every one of us, we're talking about that divine spark within each and every one of us. You know, Yeshua the Christ, Jesus, um, uh, he said it is not robbery to think yourself equal to God. It is not robbery. And, and here's the thing is, um, you know, we do our spiritual practice and we keep trying to expand and evolve and grow and all this. And what the bottom line is, is separation. It is not robbery to think yourself equal to God. And here is where our answered prayer comes from, is knowing that I am God. I am one. When, when I was a practitioner student, um, and uh, you know, other practitioner students, they would start to do the prayer. We were learning how to pray and whatnot. And a practitioner student would say, in the unification stage, you know, recognize I, God is all there is. I unify. I am one with God. And in that stage, oftentimes the students would say, "I am God," and I'd go, "What? <laughs> I don't think you created all that there is." Okay. But that's exactly what has to be healed. We have to be able to say that with confidence, that divine spark that is within each and every one of us that wants to express the highest and best that we have to express. That divine spark is saying, I can never be separate, and I am God. Now, does anybody kind of go, <laughs> when you say that? You can, I am God. <laughs> but this is, where, this is what we need to heal. This is what we need to heal, is our separation. It is in the healing of our separation that all things come together, that all things are made perfect. And here's the thing, you know, we want a better world. We want more peace. We want more harmony. We truly want to love our neighbor. And isn't that hard? I mean, constantly there are people who challenge us to be the God that we are, to be more loving, to stand in that truth. And it is not necessarily an easy thing, but this is what we have to do. And so how do we do that? We see that divine spark in each other. Also, ourselves, of course, first and foremost, and as we see it in ourselves, we can look out and see it in each other. And um, in, the, in this scene, the oneness, in this scene, the divinity within each and every one of us, that's where we heal our world. That's where we really get to experience what we desire. We desire perfect love, joy, peace, harmony, and creativity. God is the creator. God imbued us with all those same qualities. We are here to create. So what are we creating? What is it that you're creating? Right in this moment, your thought is creating. So we want to check that and make sure that we're thinking from our God self, our high holy self, and not our egoic self, Liz, who always wants to like point out where the difficulties and the challenges are. So seeing that divinity, I just, I just love this. Um, um, my husband recently, he did a film in New York. It's a true story. It's a prison film. They shot it in a prison, and it's about this teacher who uh, brings theater into the prison um, and allows them to find a way to express themselves, these inmates. And um, everyone in the movie, except for like four people, were actually actors like my husband, Coleman Domingo. The rest were actually 
inmates. So my husband on breaks, his, his dressing room was actually a cell block. <laughs> Got a rug there and a table. There's your dressing room. Um, but so during the breaks, you know, he just wanted to hang out with all these different people, all these inmates. And he's like, so he's having this wonderful conversation with this one guy. And all of a sudden it hits him. Oh, yeah, you're in here because you were a hitman for the black mafia and just went around killing people. Oh, yeah, you're here because you murdered that family. I mean, horrible, horrible things that people did. And while he was there and getting to know them and experiencing them as an individual, he said, I see the humanity in all of them. I see the humanity in all of them. And there's where we need to go. We need to see the humanity in what we might call the lowest of the low. We have to see the humanity in each other and what we might say uh, you know, is not even dignified to be called a human being because of what they experience. We have to see the humanity in that. Holy cow. How are we doing with that? <laughs> I have to say I fail often. But this is where we need to go when we start seeing that divinity within each and every person. We lift our world. Something does absolutely shift. And we ourselves get to experience that glorious expansion of God. What is it that you desire? What is it that you desire? God placed something in your heart. When you came into this body and you took this body and came into this world, right in that very moment of incarnation, you had a heart's desire. And maybe during the course of your life, it got, you, you forgot about it. It got thrown here and there and there. But God placed that heart's desire within you to be fulfilled. So right here, I want each and every one of you to know whatever that heart's desire is, it is here to be fulfilled. So you have to let go of any thoughts, those egoic thoughts that say, oh, I'm too old. Hello, let's not talk about that. There's no such thing as too old. That doesn't, that's not, does not exist. It only exists in our egoic consciousness. There's, it's never too late. You're never too old. It's never too late. So what we're going to do, we're, we're going to do a little experiential here. But um, one, one other thing I want to say is, um, that, that divine spark, we need to see it in our children. And, and whether you have children yourself or you are a friend of children or just you know, support children, that divine spark, if we can see that in them regardless of what they're doing, something really shifts for the entire world and especially them. You know, again, children, they come into this world and they're, they're limitless. And then human society says, well, no, there is this limit. Well, you know, there is this limit. And so we as a, as a human society, we constantly put limits on our children. We need to release that. We need to let them be the divinity that they are. They are always creating. They are so close to the source. And oftentimes, we will just squelch that. So right here and right now, we're going to lift up all of our children everywhere, everywhere. And here's one thing that um, I love, Abraham Hicks. Abraham Hicks says, relative to our children or any children with whom we would interact, our one dominant intention would be to give them a conscious understanding of how powerful and important and valuable and perfect they are. Every word that would come out of our mouths would be a word that would be offered with the desire to help this individual know that they are powerful. It would be a word of empowerment. We would set the tone for upliftment and understand that everything, everything will gravitate to that tone if we maintain it with consistency. So tonight when you go home and see your children or when you talk to your children after getting offline here or uh, your cousins or nieces or nephews, just remember, whatever that conversation is, you are going to be the light of love. You are gonna be, you are gonna be that beacon, that vibration. We are all vibrating with something. What do you wanna vibrate with? Let's vibrate 
with that divinity, with that good that, again, was placed within our physical, mental, emotional, spiritual being. We are one with the one. And so we're going to embrace it all. We're going to embrace all our challenges and bless them. We're going to embrace all the craziness that we see in the world, what's going on uh, you know, with climate change and, and the scary things going on in the government and the Ukraine, all these various things that we are experiencing right now. They will shift with our intention of love. They will shift. And I know it's sometimes it's like, are you kidding me? That just can't be possible. It's so overwhelming. It's just too much. But no, when two or more agree, and we got more than two here. We got more than two here. And when we agree and we say, yes, we can change the world. We can shift the world. We, can, we need to see that world we desire and put our vibration and energy behind it. And then it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. And I see it happen in my own life as I practice a principle and really put it into use in my life. I'll see something shift. I'll go, oh, my God, this person I really hated, I love now. And no, but really, but I really love because it's been a shift in me. And I shined at, at my heart so wanted to be loving to this person that I hate it. <laughs> and, and, you know, we all have people in our life, and they're there to challenge us to be more loving. I had a person in my life who has challenged me to be more loving, and I was failing greatly. <laughs> and then I had to go back to what is the truth and what is my heart's desire. And the truth is there is only one life. I don't care what color or creed or how it expresses itself, there's one life, one thing going on. And whenever we're challenged, that's what we need to do, is step right back into, there's one thing, God and it's good. There's one thing, God and it's creative. There's one thing, God and it's prosperous and magnificent. There's one thing going on. Let's hook into it, man. Let's hook into it. Let's, let's really shift. Let's really stand by what we're doing here. When we come to a place like this online here in person, when you come to a place like this, you're coming here because there is a longing within your being to be more godlike. There is a longing within your being to be more loving. That's why you come here. You, we go through our week and like, oh my God, I forgot all about being loving. Let me get to church. I can remember again, I can be the loving presence I wish to experience in all of my life, in all areas of my life. So, let's go on a journey. Who wants to go on a journey? I do, thank you. Okay, close your eyes. And uh, you at home, if, or any, even here, if you have a little notepad or a pen, um, you might, something might hit you that you want to take note of. So, close your eyes. Breathe in through your nose. Exhale. Breathe in through your nose. Ah, release. Feel every part of your being relaxing. Take a deep breath. Ah. How lovely it is to feel this breath of God moving through us. Just keep breathing slow, deep. And with each breath, you feel more light. You feel like a feather so light, rele releasing, releasing any thoughts to this day, any worries right now, we're just letting them go. And as you breathe and you feel more light, feel yourself just lift up. You're lifting up out of your chair. You're rising up. 
light as a feather, you are flying. Feel the freedom of flying. Beyond this building, beyond this city, you so enjoy this lightness, this freedom of flying. And as you fly, you see down in front of you a six-sided pyramid, a jade green pyramid. It is shimmering with light. It beckons you. You land in front of this pyramid, this beautiful shimmering jade green. In front of you are mother of pearl steps. You ascend the steps. You see beauty all around you. You come to the top of the pyramid. There are two large doors. On one side is Archangel Michael. On the other side is Archangel Raphael. Greet them, take them in, feel their love. They open the doors for you and you enter the pyramid. All around you is such beauty, waterfalls, butterflies, flowers. You can smell the beauty, breathe that in. It's astounding. The light is astounding. You see angels all around you in this beautiful room. In the center of this room is a magnificent throne. It has all the colors of the rainbow. It is radiating light. You can feel the energy of the light. Let yourself feel it. You go over to the throne, breathing in all the beauty, the smells, the loveliness, breathing in the light, and you take a seat. Right in this moment, all you need to know is known. Right here in this throne, in the center of your being, all is known, all is created. Just enjoy how comfortable you feel, how open you feel. And now ask yourself, High Holy Self, reveal my heart's desire. And ask yourself, High Holy Self, what must I release to achieve this heart's desire? What must I surrender? What must I let go?
and ask your high holy self, what must I embrace to achieve this heart's desire? What must I embrace? Forgiveness, more love, trust, faith. High holy self, what must I embrace? And let yourself be filled with gratitude. Thank you, God. Thank you for this heart's desire. Thank you for this achievement. Thank you for this success. Thank you for this direction. Thank you. All is well. All is good. Thank you. Know at any time you can return to this place and you can feel this centered within your being. You can feel this centeredness. You can feel this success. You can feel this completion. You can feel this, ah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So how blessed we are. Just take a breath in. Return to your space right here. And allow yourself to be filled up with that love, that God's love everywhere present. Feel the divine spark within you. Can you feel it? Can you feel the energy radiating from your heart space? Can you feel it? Thought plus feeling equals your life. Feel it. So what a blessing it is to just become aware of that divine presence right within you. How amazing that is to touch that. To say, touch the hem of the garment. When you stop and you center yourself like that, you are touching the hem of the garment. You are allowing your divine self to break forth with joy, with magnificence, with absolute fulfillment. God placed that thought within you. God placed that love within you. God did it. Don't deny it anymore. And when you're living in that divine place, all things unfold with absolute perfection. Absolute perfection. And you can call forth exactly what you want. Some time ago, um, I was on the prayer hotline at Agape, and we would transfer the phone to our phone and, you know, take prayer calls all night. And, um, all of a sudden, I uh, like had this huge pain in my heart. And I thought, oh my God, I'm having a heart attack. Well, I wait for the prayer hotline to call me. And that pain just continued to grow and grow and grow. And then all of a sudden, I lost use of my body. I went blind. And I'm laying on the floor. And then the phone rings. I'm like, I don't think I can pray right now. I think I'm dying. And of course, the phone kept ringing. So I answered the phone. And I said, uh, you know, I got prayer ministry. And the woman on the other end of the phone, she said, oh my God, I'm dying. My heart is breaking. I'm like, me too. I, she said, I can't take the pain in my heart. My husband just walked out. It's over with. I can't, I'm, I'm just going to die. I can't take the pain in my heart. I can't take the pain in my heart. And I said, shut up, which is what you always want to hear when you call the prayer hotline. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't that just what you want to hear? Shut up. Because uh, I was in pain. I, I couldn't see. I was in absolute pain. But right in that moment, I had no choice but to pray. 
I had no choice but to pray. There was nothing else to do but to pray. So I took her, she and I, I, I took us through a little meditation. I'm like, going, okay, your heart is opening up. Okay, just breathe right now, okay? Um, but anyway, so I kept going through that and going through that. And as we went through it, the pain dissipated. I still couldn't see. I still couldn't move part of my arm. But the pain was gone because right in that moment, I recognized the truth. The truth is, you are not this body. So your body can't be having this pain. I know. I mean, Emma Curtis Hopkins, you're like, what? <laughs> uh, wait, what? But, but that, that really is true. We are a spiritual being having a physical incarnation. So we are absolutely in control of any pain in the body, any disconnect in the body, any disconnect in the emotion. We are absolutely in control of all of this when we practice the principle, when we practice the presence, when we can stop for a moment. And I was forced to stop. I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to stop. I, I was like going to go about whatever I was doing. But I was forced to stop through pain. And you know, uh, Dr. Beckwith, he always says this. You probably remember this. He always says this. You know, you grow through pain or insight. I always pick pain. I don't know why. I guess it's more fun on some level for me. But this is really how we grow, through pain or insight. So let's choose the insight. Let's do our practice. Let's do what we're supposed to be doing and choose that insight to lift us and all those around us. And really, let's create the world we want. Let's create the world we want. One that's so joy-filled that we are just dancing all the time. One that is so clear that we are experiencing the fullness of our heart's desire. That is why we're here. That's why we incarnated. So let's do it. I'm going to read one more thing to you, and then we are going to pray, baby, because that's what we do. This also is um, Abraham Hicks. God, I love them. You know, they're really absolute, absolute. And that's, Emma Curtis Hopkins is like that, too. She's just absolute. I mean, she's so absolute that I kind of go, huh? Um, but, I mean, that's why I keep reading her, because I, I, can't, I can't get it. So I keep reading it, and someday I'm going to really get her. She's a good person to get, if you can. Um, so, it feels so good, it feels so good to realize that the energy that creates worlds is supporting you. To wake up every morning in clarity, knowing exactly who you are. To know the source is thinking through you. To experience meaningful rendezvous. To dovetail with the right people who give you the right piece of information at just the right time. To never feel dependent upon anyone. To know with clarity who you are. To feel the energy that creates worlds Feel the energy that creates worlds moving through your fingertips, through your mind, to see evidence all around you that the thoughts you have been thinking and the feel the power of who you are. That's what you came for, to feel the power of who you are. And we are God. I am God. Okay, sorry, I still, have, I, I still twitch when I say that. I can't, I can't help it. I'm still working on that you know, separation thing. Um, I, I might work on it the rest of my life, but we, th I will know I have healed my separation when I can say, I am God and not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, I, I, I am God, okay, <laughs> truly, let's take a breath right here and right now, and let's just know that I am God. Uh, some philosophers said half of our brain is God and the other half is our human self. Half of our brain is God. I am God. So right here in this moment, let's just take that breath. <sighs> what a blessing. What a joy. What an amazement it is to stop and recognize the power, the presence, the creator, the thing itself, that God, that good, good is my God, that thing that loved itself so much it loved each and every one of us into creation each and every one of us. 
is a divine idea in the mind of God. And right here and right now, we are calling forth our divinity. Right here and right now, we are standing in our power. God is for me. Nothing is ever against me. So in this very moment here, we are surrendering thoughts of negativity. We are surrendering thoughts of fear. We are surrendering anything that doesn't serve us, and we're standing in truth. I am the power of God, I am the presence of God, I am the courage of God, I am the prosperity of God, I am the love of God, I am the joy of God, I am the all and all that God is, I am. Here's where we stand, here's what we live from this place, right here, right now, and anything that is challenging you in this moment, say, be gone, get behind me any disease in the body, get behind me. That's not my truth. My truth is I am energized, vital in my physical being. Any fear and worry in the emotional being, any thoughts of I am less than, all of that in the emotional being, right here and right now, we're saying, get behind me. That is not the truth. The truth is I am a lovable, magnificent expression of the Most High God. So right in this moment, we are thanking God for our heart's desire being fulfilled. We are thanking God for peace on this earth. We are thanking God that prayer is answered. All we do is speak our word into the law, and the law says yes, yes. So right in this moment, the law, the universal law is saying yes. You are more than this. You are more than any challenge. You are more. Yes, right in this moment, you are saying yes to financial freedom. You are saying yes to more creativity. You are saying yes to abundance. You are saying yes to energy in your body. You are saying yes. We are saying yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. All is well. How grateful we are. We bless all people everywhere. We are so truly grateful. And we all say together, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Thank you, beloved Mother, Father, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Something glorious is happening. Something magnificent is happening. We can feel it within our bones. We can feel it with every part of our being that we are in the yes of good, the yes of God, the yes of love. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. I release this word into the law where it is made whole, where it is made complete, and in agreement we say, and so it is, amen. Thank you. Yes, I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm whole. I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the Spirit. So this is our affirmative giving time. So take out your offering or at home, and Mark will tell you in a bit various ways you can give. There's so many wonderful ways to give. But right here, let's just put that over our heart and say, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. 
I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. And if you're here in person, there's a box outside that you can drop off your offering. And I'll let Mark tell you all kinds of stuff later. Or now. Or now? Wait, wait, we're going to sing some more? All right. All right. Let's do that. Oh, we're blessed all. All right, I have some announcements. First, I'm just going to carry forward these images that you left us with, Liz, this idea of this throne with your heart's desire and just that spirit of God just shining forth. And the same with Tina's songs and music and Sam, too. Anyway, I hope that you feel compelled to give. I'm taking the abundance class now. I think many of you are also taking it with me in that law of circulation. So again, in order to get, we give. And so, as Liz mentioned, there are many ways, and we make it easy for you to make donations to the church. There's the text to give number and the QR code that, for those of you that are in the sanctuary, they're in your program, just with your camera, just take a picture of that QR code, it makes it very easy to give. Or you go to nhcrs.org forward slash give, and then uh, on the website, you're gonna be able to easily make a donation. Prayer with the practitioner is available after service in person or on Zoom. So if you're in person in the sanctuary, just come to the front and a practitioner will be available to pray with you. Next Wednesday, Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Uh, again, meditation at 6.50, service at 7 o'clock. Join Reverend Sidney next week as she shares on the topic, who's in charge here? You're in charge here. Um, not to give it away. Uh, this, this Sunday, the Grief Support Group, this group that's facilitated by the wonderful practitioner Carol Winokur, will meet this Sunday at 1 p.m. on Zoom, and all are welcome. There is still time to sign up for Dr. Mark's Abundance Workshop. He offers this every year. I've I think I've taken it the last three years in a row, and every year I get more and more out of it. Uh, it's Mondays through uh, August 22nd, so there's two more Mondays, but the first two Mondays have been recorded. So you can sign up now, and you'll be able to view the recordings for the classes that you may have missed. Join Dr. Mark for this amazing workshop where you'll learn how to expand your prosperity consciousness. Class meets from 6.30 to 8 p.m. and is based on the book Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. Sign up online, cost is responsible giving, and the book is available in the bookstore. And if that isn't enough, we have the Labyrinth this month. If you've never participated in the, in the Labyrinth, please, I, I cannot speak more highly about an experience. I participated in 2019, which I think is the last time we had it here at church, and I had a revelatory moment. Uh, if you want to know more about it, you'll have to ask me about it. But please participate. It is such a gift. It is such a wonderful experience. 
Come one, come all, and support your soul with the peace and blessing of a labyrinth walk. Uh, it'll be Friday, August 19th, 6.30 p.m. orientation, explanation for first-time walkers, and then the walk will be from 7 to 9 p.m. It's also on Saturday, Saturday morning, August 20th. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come at any time within those hours. Again, Friday between 7 and 9, or Saturday between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. I can't encourage you enough to participate in that. And then there's a practitioner graduation. There's four of us that just graduated recently. Brenda's here, I'm here, uh, Nikki Zavara, and Luana Schertzberg. Um, anyway, we are celebrating our graduation Sunday, August 21st at 1.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. Um, we've completed and passed our practitioner training. Please come support us and join in the celebration. Uh, our regular activity, Zoom virtual patio, is before and after every Sunday and Wednesday service. And Zoom meditation is every mon morning, Monday through Saturday, from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. And finally, visit the website, nhcrs.org, to, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all of our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Bless you. I think Liz is going to give a benediction. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Mary Catherine O'Hart for holding vigil. And Dean Reagan out there on Facebook Live. Hi, Dean. Um, um, uh, also on Zoom support, we have Barbara Berge, Ray Reagan, Diane Satterley. Here, of course, in the sanctuary, we have Adam Keshen on Lights and Sound, Deborah Lockhart. Deborah, thank you. Um, Greeter and Usher. And we have Doreen Remo and Brenda Jordan and Blair Thompson. Thank you so much. They're always here supporting us. Thank you, everyone. You know, these things just don't happen. Thank you, Mark. These things just don't happen, you know. We have a team always that, that uh, makes the service happen, so we're so very grateful for your service. Thank you very much. And um, are we going to do a little song again, or we're done? Yeah, let's be blessed with always. Let's do that. Let's do it. Everybody stand. How about that? Stretch. Everybody stand. Stretch.